in this advanced tech world, DevOps is a buzzword. They can be DevOps architects, operational engineers, DevOps engineers, depending on the various DevOps skills. Most of the organizations are now hiring DevOps professionals to make their projects successful and profitable. The demand is basically growing very rapidly and you must take advantage of it. Hi everyone, this is Kavya from Edureka and in this session we will discuss the top 10 DevOps skills or tools to learn. Before we begin, I'm going to brief you all about the agenda in today's session. Firstly, we will understand what is DevOps. Then we will move on to the main agenda of this session and discuss the top 10 DevOps skills to learn. Finally, we'll conclude the session by understanding the DevOps learning path. I hope you all are clear about what we will be addressing today. Now, if you like our videos, please don't forget to subscribe and press that bell icon to never miss the latest updates on the Edureka YouTube channel. Also check out our Edureka DevOps training certification, the link to which is given in the description box below. Without much ado, let's get started. Introduction to DevOps. So firstly, let us understand what is DevOps. In the IT industry, there are two different entities that is the development team and the operation teams. The DevOps approach simply brings development and operations together with the goal of streamlining application building and deployment into an automated process that takes into account the entire delivery chain. Now, under the DevOps model, application delivery is a continual workflow that essentially loops back onto itself to support a continuous process. You can see this on the screen. You obviously still have specific tasks that must be carried out, but they're performed as an integrated whole that requires all participants to work together to keep the flow moving. So at its core, you could say that DevOps is about creating a culture of collaboration and transparency that fosters open communication across all teams involved in application delivery. Let's move on to the main agenda of today. That is the top 10 DevOps skills to learn. The first and the most important skill for you to acquire is Linux fundamentals. Linux is a free open source operating system released under the GNU general public license. So basically an operating system is simply a software that directly manages a system's hardware and resources like CPU, memory and storage. The operating system usually sits between applications and hardware and makes the connections between all of your software and the physical resources that you work on. In Linux, anyone can run, study, modify and redistribute the source code or even sell copies of their modified code as long as they do so under the same license. Many DevOps tools in the configuration management space like Chef, Ansible, Puppet, etc. have the architecture based on Linux master nodes. These tools help in provisioning and managing infrastructure automatically with the help of any scripting language like Ruby, Python. So Linux fundamentals and scripting's know-how is a must to get started with infrastructure automation, which is a key concept in DevOps. The next most important skill is source code management. Source code management is used to track modifications to a code repository. It tracks a running history of changes to a code base and helps resolve conflicts when merging updates from multiple contributors. Source code management is also synonymous with version control. As software projects grow in lines of code and contributor headcount, the cost of communication overhead and management complexity also grows. So here source code management comes to the rescue. It is a critical tool that helps to elevate the organizational strain of growing development costs. For example, when multiple developers are working within a shared code base, it is a common occurrence to make edits to a shared piece of code. Separate developers may be working on a seemingly isolated feature. However, this feature may use a shared code model. Therefore, developer one working on feature one could make some edits and find out later that developer two working on feature two has some conflicting edits. Source code management brought version control safeguards to prevent loss of work due to conflict overwriting. By far the most widely used modern version control system in the world today is Git. Git works by tracking changes from each individual developer and identifying areas of conflict and preventing overwrites. Source code management will then communicate these points of conflict back to the developers so that they can safely review and address. Git is an example of a distributed version control system. In addition to this, Git has been designed with performance, security and flexibility in mind. Moving to the third most important skill is the continuous integration and continuous delivery. 
A better understanding of the continuous integration and continuous delivery approaches helps to deliver a high quality product at a faster pace to the clients. Continuous integration is one of the best practices in DevOps community, where whenever a developer finishes a functionality or a user story, he or she integrates the new code with the existing code base continuously. This basically helps to save a lot of time spent during the integration phase of the project. So this practice helps to detect integration issues in the early stages itself, thus making the life of the developer much easier. Continuous delivery, on the other hand, comes as an extension to continuous integration, where the newly integrated code is made ready for deployment automatically without or minimum human intervention. There are two important tools you could use to practice continuous integration and continuous delivery. They are Docker and Jenkins. Jenkins is an open source tool critical for building CI-CD pipelines. It provides flexibility and many integrations. Other tools that are critical to CI-CD have Jenkins plugins. This also includes version control. Docker, on the other hand, is simply a containerization tool. Moving on to the fourth skill is infrastructure as code. Infrastructure as code is the management of infrastructure, that is networks, virtual machines, load balancers, and connection topology in a descriptive model using the same versioning as DevOps team uses for source code. Terraform, Ansible, and Chef are some popular infrastructure as code tools. So infrastructure as code enables DevOps teams to test applications in production-like environments early in the development cycle. These teams expect to provision multiple test environments reliably and on demand. Infrastructure represented as code can also be validated and tested to prevent common deployment issues. Most importantly, all these operations are traceable through the version control system, which ensures the removal of decades-old works fine on my computer problem where the code that worked in testing does not work in production. Infrastructure as code ensures continuity as all the environments are provisioned and configured automatically with no room for human error, which greatly speeds up and simplifies the software development and infrastructure operations. For a DevOps engineer, some knowledge of automation tools is extremely important. Automation is key because it allows to reduce the human component, which fosters speed, increases accuracy, improves consistency, and reliability while cutting the amount of errors. Eventually, this results in more rapid and swift, higher quality delivery of value to customers. A wide variety of DevOps tools are available in the market as the prerequisites of every specific DevOps requirement. Deciding on the right set of tools is an ever-growing challenge for the stakeholders. Furthermore, we recommend that a single tool may not be a full-fledged solution to a DevOps adoption. The most popular DevOps tools currently in the market are Puppet, Docker, and Jenkins. Moving on to the next skill is continuous testing. Continuous testing is a way to boost, speed up, and support the DevOps CI CD pipelines. It includes the practices, processes, and tools of testing early, testing often, testing everywhere, and automation. For example, whenever a developer checks the code in the source code server like Jenkins, automated set of unit tests are executed in the continuous process. If the tests fail, the build is rejected and the developer is notified. If the build passes the test, it is then deployed to performance, quality assurance servers for exhaustive functional and load tests. The tests are run in parallel and if these tests pass, the software is eventually deployed into production. The most popular tool for continuous testing is Selenium. It is a suite of different open source software tools used for automated software testing of web applications across various browsers or platforms, most often used to create robust browser-based regression automation suites and tests. Selenium, like Jenkins, has a rich repository of open source tools that are useful for different kinds of automation problems, with support for programming languages like C Sharp, Java, JavaScript, Python, Ruby, .NET, etc. Selenium can be used to write automation scripts that run against most modern web browsers. The next most important skill is containerization. It is basically the process of packaging an application along with its required libraries, frameworks, and configuration files together so that it can run in various computing environments effectively. In simpler terms, containerization is the encapsulation of an application and its required environment. Docker is a platform that provides containerization. 
It basically allows for packaging of an application and its dependencies into a container, thereby helping ease the development and accelerate the deployment of the software. Containers solve application conflicts between different environments. Indirectly, containers in Docker bring developers and IT operations closer together, making it easier for them to collaborate effectively. Adopting the container workflow provides many customers with the DevOps continuity they have sought, but previously had to implement via more complex configuration for release and build pipelines. Containers basically simplify the build or test or deploy pipelines in DevOps. Cloud Service Knowledge with time, competition in the software development industry is rapidly increasing, following which all the companies are now trying their best to sophisticate the process. And for this, they are now hugely using various cloud services. So you need to obtain knowledge about different cloud platforms and the services. This is something very important for both DevOps and cloud architect engineers. Some of the major cloud services are Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud, Amazon Web Services, and IBM. Security skills is really important too. DevOps security refers to the discipline and practice of safeguarding the entire DevOps environment, the strategies, policies, processes, and technology. Security should be built into every part of the DevOps lifecycle, including inception, design, build, test, release, support, maintenance, and other things. Today, this type of baked-in DevOps security is often called as DevSecOps, which aims to improve security through improved collaboration and shared responsibility that overlays the entire DevOps workflow. Whether you call it DevOps or DevSecOps, it has always been ideal to include security as an integral part of the entire application lifecycle. It is important to know that DevSecOps is about built-in security, not security that functions as a perimeter around applications and data. Now, if the security remains at the end of the development pipeline, organizations adopting DevOps can find themselves back to the long development cycles they were trying to avoid in the first place. The last most important practice that you have to skill is in continuous monitoring. It refers to the process and technology required to incorporate monitoring across each phase of your DevOps and IT operations life cycles. It helps to continuously ensure the health, performance, and reliability of your application and infrastructure as it moves from development to production. There are several tools used for this practice, like Nagios, which is a free-to-use open-source software tool for continuous monitoring. It basically helps you to monitor systems, networks, and infrastructure. It is used for continuous monitoring of systems, applications, servers, and business processes in a DevOps culture. Sensui is another open source monitoring tool developed for cloud environments, easily deployable through Chef and Puppet. New Relic, on the other hand, supports monitoring of PHP, Ruby, Java, Node.js, among other applications, gives insights about real-time performance of running applications. Moving on to the next part of the session is DevOps Learning Path. Edureka's DevOps Engineer Master's program will make you proficient in DevOps principles like continuous integration, continuous deployment, continuous monitoring, and continuous delivery using tools like Puppet, Nagios, Chef, Docker, Git, and Jenkins. So what are you waiting for? Get yourself enrolled today. With this, we come to the end of today's session. I hope you had a great time. Until next time, thank you. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!